This is Glenn Pendley with the Weightlifting Scoop podcast, and I'm sitting here with Elizabeth Akinwale and Rudy Nielsen, her coach. Um, I just had a we wanted to discuss weightlifting versus CrossFit because she's done both. Um, she's definitely you know a full time professional CrossFitter, but she's had the opportunity to come down with our team, uh, MDUSA Weightlifting, and do a few workouts. And a, a couple of days, she pretty much did the full team workout and uh kind of want to get her feelings on how the two compare what she'd rather do get up and train for weightlifting all day or for crossfit well i can't really say one or the other definitely um kind of makes me laugh that question but um one of the biggest things i think is just obviously the variety so um you've kind of made me laugh a few times. I'll walk in and say, what, what should I do? And you'll say, snatch a clean and jerk, snatch a clean and jerk. So, um, you know, obviously with CrossFit, there's a million different combinations of things to do. Um, so I guess that is a, a plus and a minus because, um, you know, my experience with CrossFit training has been that I have to spend a lot of time on the things that are, that don't come as naturally to me. And so you can actually end up feeling like you just pretty much suck at everything. Um, because obviously, you know, everything, you have to get everything up to speed. So, um, you never really feel like you have a foothold because there's just always something else that you're not good at. Um, well, one of the things, one, of, excuse me, one of the things, uh, that most people really like, or a lot of CrossFitters, and I joke with them about this when I do seminars and stuff is you get to sit down in weightlifting. <laughs> you get to sit down like between every rep almost, you know, you do a lot of singles. Um, whereas CrossFit, you have to keep standing up and running around and getting tired <laughs> and, and all that stuff. And I think, I think, uh, weightlifters look, I know most weightlifters look at CrossFit and say, how do people do that? I mean, my God, that must be so, so hard. Um, what do you think leaves you, lift you like more exhausted after a day, after a day of doing it? Honestly, the weightlifting does. Um, and maybe that's just because I'm not, my body's not used to like that many heavy lifts. Um, but it's funny because for me, once I'm warm and going, I just want to keep going. I don't necessarily want to sit down. Uh, I've gotten more that, accustomed. That's just unnatural. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's why, that's why, we, you know, if kids like choose weightlifting, I always say there's a certain percentage of the kids that I've gotten, um, that have come into the sport that, you know, they do everything. They're swimming, they're, it's playing soccer, they're playing baseball, they're playing this, they're playing that. And it's like they have the soccer mom that's, you know, that's main job is just transport around to all these different sports, you know, that they play. But then there's another percentage of kids that I really think they were sitting on the couch eating, pot eating potato chips all the time, getting no exercise. And their parents said, you have to do a sport. And they like went out and watched a soccer practice or whatever. Now that it's out in the hot sun, you know. And everybody's running around, sweating, getting tired, and they come to weightlifting. It's indoors, and it's probably air conditioned, and everyone's sitting down between every rep, and they're like, "This is a sport for me," <laughs> you know. So you know, they're they're two entirely different things, but I kind of also know what you mean, and it's it's like a different kind of fatigue in weightlifting. Yeah, absolutely, I would totally agree with that. Um, and I think maybe for me, coming from a gymnastics background, you're doing tons of different types of things every day. Um, so f to be a weightlifter, I, I just think you have to really love the lifts or you would just go insane. Yeah. And that's, you know, to us, variety is doing snatches from the floor or doing snatches off a block, you know? Right. And yeah, you know, I think that's a good variety for a weightlifter. I mm -hmm. mean, I think it, other than being good in training, it, it, a lot of it is, it's nice on the mind to not be doing the exact same thing all the time, right. but that's how variety, that's how, what a lack of variety there is on weightlifting that, you know, you get your variety from doing, doing two versions of the same lift. Right. Um, and that, I mean, do you, did you find that mentally hard putting in like, you know, I think when you came down last time you did pretty much the full two workouts during one of the days you were here and four hours of picking a bar up you know, off the ground and putting it over your head. Did you find that? challenging i mean yeah i do i did find it challenging um and i think for me it was probably a little easier mentally just because i was learning new things and so just really concentrating and focusing on on kind of trying to ingrain those new habits but to think about doing it day after day session after session um 
it's pretty it, it was pretty unbelievable you know um but the flip side of that is actually getting to try to perfect something because in crossfit you start to feel like you're spread kind of thin because there's only so many there's only so many hours your body only has so much to give um and you're just spread really thin yeah, I like that aspect of weightlifting is, you know, the pursuit of perfection that is never really going to happen, you know, um, or even if you achieve the, the perfect lift and everything just feels weightless and falls into place. And you're like, my God, that's how it should feel every time. That was so easy, but yet it's a new max with the very next lift. It's going to be gone. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you, you can, you can reach out and touch, you know, perfection every once in a while, I think, but you can't grab a hold of it and right. you know wrestle it back to you. I mean, it's always right there, out of reach or at fingertip, uh, you know, distance. So, I uh, let me ask you this: Do you, when you, I mean, you said that it, it's it's frustrating being slightly, being a little spread too thin and not really being able to concentrate on something. When you go to weightlifting competitions, does that frustrate you that you're competing against weightlifters? And I'm sure there's something in the back of your mind, like at the American Open or, you know, at the Arnold, um, that you're thinking, you were the fourth woman overall at the Arnold. Right. By Sinclair. Right. Do you ever get that feeling when you go to those weightlifting meets and you know you're doing really, really good, even being a CrossFitter, that's kind of frustrating, but you're like, you know what? If I was training like you and I was putting all my time into weightlifting, I would kick your butt. <laughs> you ever think that? Well, I'm not going to say I would put it in those terms, <laughs> but absolutely, because I want... I want to see where I can go with both things. And so again, you, you can, you only have one body, one life. Well, you know, I only have one 2013. And yeah. so, um, it is, it's, it is a little, and, and even, well, I think you guys were, had mentioned before, um, that the, the nationals and the games are the same weekend. So not only training wise, but you know, you can't, you cannot compete equally on, in both. Um, so yeah, it's, it definitely is a source of frustration because I want, I want to be the best weightlifter I can weightlifter I can be, and I also want to see what I can do with CrossFit. Um, ask this question for Rudy here. Um, how far away from her potential as a weightlifter do you think CrossFitting is keeping Elizabeth, or do you think she's going to get there CrossFitting? No, <clears throat> I don't think she will. Um, I think she's going to. From a technical standpoint, you know this. You you've seen her, coached her in person. She's ninety percent, maybe. Um, that's just a random number out of the air, but <clears throat> it's pretty close. There's only there's only so much there's only so many lifts we can do. There's only so much time in the day. There's only so many so much her body will take um, to get her to that ninety five percent where she needs to be to qualify for worlds or to win a nationals or whatever. Um, qualifying, qualifying total for worlds is 220. Is that right? Somewhere around there? Um, I, 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 off the top of my head, I don't know what the qualifying total is, but very few people reach a hundred percent of that qualifying total. However, I think that, um, uh, I think that in the 220, 230 range would probably be enough to make the team. Right. So something like that. So for me, she's a, she's a 220, 230 who's at 200 right now. Um, I, I think, um, 90% is a good number probably to put on both sides, to put on her technique and to put on um, the numbers that she has right now. Just because there's only, like I said, there's only so much time. There's only so many things we can focus on. And um, the beauty is that how many people can say that they're 90% of one sport while they're in the top seven in the world in another sport? That's, that's, uh, it goes it speaks volumes about her level the level of athlete that she is and her training experience and everything else but um i think yeah to 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 be a to be at absolute peak level she she can't be there right now what what changes i think you know elizabeth's really improved her olympic lifting um, I think from the first time that I saw her till now, she's definitely made some, made some big changes in her technique that I think are for the better. Um, what changes or is that something that you guys have worked on more in the last six months than you did before? Or is this, this pretty much been a consistent 
you know, emphasis since you started coaching her. Yeah, it's been a it's been a consistent emphasis, and it's been and part of the reason why we sought you was the snatch had stalled. Um, there was issues with the with the first pull. There was things that needed to be fixed, and um, we wanted to go to the best for that. And um, the more <clears throat> the more time she gets to spend with you, the more time she gets to spend with somebody like Coach Coach McCauley or somebody like that, the better the better that's going to be. But yeah, I mean, we've for the the year and a half or so that I've been working with her, that's that's a primary focus as much as muscle up technique is as much as running technique is, which we, we, we actually worked on. You worked with her today off the blocks on the snatch. And then we went outside and worked on running technique. Um, which was more fun, Elizabeth. <laughs> Snatching. <laughs> there you go. Well, I mean, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't, I don't want to have to work yeah. on that with her, but that, that's something that's, it's imperative for her, for her development it's imperative for, especially for the goals that are at hand right now. Right. So we we are highly focused on technique. And to be completely honest, and this is the first thing I thought of when you answered the question, part of it is that she's she's on the team now, right? So part of it is that we're going to take it. We took it seriously before. Now we're going to take it even more seriously, and especially with having access to to you guys and having access to the facility and things like that. There, There's a... There's no doubt that we're going to – not only have we emphasized that, but there's no doubt we're going to continue to emphasize it and, and uh, put as much time and effort into that as possible. What is your – get both of you guys' answer to this. Um, what's your prediction for your weightlifting total, you know, say by American Open this next year or this year, December? Wow. Um you, sn- you snatched 87 yesterday, which was a new PR. 89. 88. 89. 89. 89. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. She snatched 89 from the floor, which was a, a new two kilo PR, and an 85 from the blocks, which I understand was also a PR. Yeah. Um, so what? what is your prediction for the American Open? Put you on the spot. Here. Yeah, I am on the spot because. Uh, um, hmm. What's your best clean and jerk? 107. 107. So. 206 total uses your best lifts. Oh Lord, I can't even answer. I know, that. I so know far. that you lift. I know that you lift better in competition. I, it's very hard for me to answer that because I feel like I'm just flying. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. I'm not like I guess that sounds bad. I don't have some goal numbers, but for me, when I put a goal number in my head, by the time I even approach it, I've already I already don't care about that number. I've already moved on to the next number. I so, gotcha. um, when is the American Open? The end of the year. American Open is in December. Oh Lord! Um, <laughs> can you answer that? <laughs> Somewhere between two fifteen and two twenty. Um, I think it could be more than two twenty, depending on what happens after the games. Um, if she's at two oh six right now and she hasn't really put a good day together, um, she hasn't put. She, you saw it the other day. She hasn't. She hasn't had a good. She hasn't had a really. The, the because of the volume of what we're doing right now. She hasn't had a, a day on the snatch where she's really felt good, where the bars felt light. And when that happens, it'll be 91 to 93, somewhere in there. What, are you already thinking about 93 or 95? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> she's probably already thinking about 100. When I'm here, this is, when I'm here, I've been, I'm not even thinking about numbers. I'm just trying to think about doing it right. Seriously. Because, yeah. like, the first time I met with you, um, I was just trying to get out of my head, just worrying about what – just do it right because I've yeah. had plenty of time where I'm chasing a number at right. the gym by myself. If I'm getting, you know, if I'm getting looked at, I want to just do it right. Do it I don't right. care what, what number comes up. What was the, there was a big change in her. Well, jerk. hold on before, okay, before, ahead. before you, what do you predict that she'll hit? Um, I would, I would say in the, in the low to mid nineties and just based on the limited, look at the way you're jerking now, which has changed recently quite a bit. I don't know. I honestly don't think like a, like a, I, that, that's, that's, that's a tougher than the snatch for me to try to try to predict. Cause you've got some room in the snatch. You did some nice, good snatches yesterday. You can kind of see where it started to fall apart. And, you know, um, I don't know. I'm going to say, I don't think, I don't think 120 clean jerk would be, 
say 115 to 120 would be out of your best clean is 110, right? Yeah, 110. 110. Your best clean is 110. I'd say say 115 or more, honestly, because I, I think you've got the physical capability to clean 115 probably right now, and and it's just a matter of doing it, and then I you know and sticking with sticking with the better jerk technique. Which uh, what did you guys do to? Get her, get her back foot, back knee to go down instead of her foot going nine miles behind her. We spent, uh, what, four hours one day? Like one hour? Wow. We spent a lot of hours one day working out of the blocks and, and it was, it was different cues and it was, um, she sometimes is it, you know, this as a coach and an athlete, sometimes you cue one thing and, and the athlete hears something different. Hears something different. Yeah. And so it basically took getting to the point where I could give her a cue that she understood, and we ended up where you were screaming and she was crying. No, no, okay. believe it. It was probably one of the most. Oh, yeah, you walked off a few times. I did walk off a few times, but the, it was probably one of the more productive. But you didn't cry. No, it okay. was probably one of the more productive <laughs> sessions we've had, where we ended up with a like a square on the floor and a because I've used all sorts of different yeah chalk lines on the floor, and she just basically got it. I mean, she just she finally understood, and and um. And a lot of it was pushing the front leg out, not so much worrying about uh, more worrying about driving under the bar than than the feet going everywhere. Gotcha. I think for me, um, it a huge piece of it was what happened at the American or at the Arnold on my clean and jerk, and I walked away from that pissed and like literally embarrassed. Um, and then it was compounded when uh, I think Hook Grip had posted some pictures. And I was just mortified at what <laughs> <laughs> And so I mean it was something So that, they basically embarrassed you into oh, yes. improving. Oh yeah. 100, right? from, from uh I hit a hun I hit a hundred and I missed like one oh four twice. But the hooker pictures were the hundred from the Arnold? No, they were the combination of all three of my lifts. Oh. So one I, I successfully got a hundred with a horrible, ugly jerk and then missed what to me should be easy one oh four, you know. Anyway, it just I just thought it was absolutely embarrassing, and I was just angry because it's just unacceptable, and it was something that had been talked about, but I think for me, one thing that's been negative is, well, maybe it's just, this is just probably just normal, um, kind of getting along on just kind of strength or whatever, and you don't really worry about making the changes until you feel like you have to, and so I had been able to continue to PR my clean and jerk, um, doing what I was doing, and I really didn't... I don't know if I believed I could do it any other way, um, but when I saw what it looked like and I saw the failure, it was just like the last straw, and we did struggle a little bit like this one particular day, um, and I sort of felt like I had to buy into buy into another technique, so that's what happened. Well, that what you said about thinking if you're if you're strong and you can normally beat people just by being stronger, even if everything else isn't perfect. There are a lot of weightlifters that that go by a year or two thinking that, and then it's just all the more difficult to uh, to change, um, you know, when when it's needed. Um, but so it's it's good that you got that out of the way. You know, it's it's good that you got that out of the way. The, you know, the cool thing was is is that it was probably her clean's fault. Because her clean had surpassed her jerk by so much that it just we we couldn't ignore it anymore. Yeah, you know what I mean. And we don't even know. Like right now, we don't even really know what she cleans because she hasn't gone for a real a true max without the jerk. But the two thirty five that the, or the one hundred seven that she just hit, uh, what was it, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, something like that, was just flawless. Like the best, probably the best lift I've ever seen her, or the best jerk I've ever seen her do, especially at load like that. So it's um. It was really cool to see her like that switch just flipped and she realized that, that it wasn't going to work the other way anymore. And, um, to really put in the time and effort to, to really like buy into it and work on it no matter what is, it was a really cool thing to see as a coach. Elizabeth, what do you see as the next, uh, and I asked a question about both sports, but what do you see as the next, big and this may be a bad time to ask this this given that the games are so the regionals and the games are so close what do you see looking forward is the next big thing um if you had to say i want to improve in crossfit what is your current i think the word for it in crossfit is goat hmm. 
What is your current thing that you are not happy if you saw a video of you competing at the top level against other people in this one particular thing that, that you could say, leaving the competitive season that year, that's where I'm going to bear down and work on? Well, right now, if I had to name a skill, um, I guess the thing that gives me the most heartburn is still muscle-ups. Um, I feel like the I feel like the way I'm doing them has improved greatly, but still kind of breaks down when I'm fatigued. Um, and it's kind of just, one, it's also like a mental barrier because I have kind of historically had that be a weakness. Um, and the other thing more generally, which is pretty easy to fix, I've, I've experienced this kind of um, on an up and down basis over the past couple of years. It's kind of settling into like a comfortable 80% effort when I'm working. Um, and really needing to like learn how to push. Um, I shouldn't say learn how, but to consistently do that. Um, so it helps a lot when I'm with Rudy because it just happens um, for the most part. But, uh, and also like I've gotten, you know, more training partners and stuff like that. So I have kind of a push. But um, that's one thing that I definitely, you know, criticize myself pretty highly about because it just, I don't know what it is. I, I maybe mean, it's just human nature to want to kind of stick in that comfortable, comfortable zone. Uh, if I ask the same question about weightlifting, um, what is the one thing that you think you need to do to put your total 10 kilos higher? Hmm. To be honest, um, right now I feel like I'm doing what I need to do. Um, I like, you know, just for example, last couple of days, um, particularly working with Don and my jerk. Um, and, you know, I've obviously other than focusing full time on right. training weightlifting, um, I feel like my, my weightlifting training has evolved so much, even just in the last few months, my understanding of the lifts and what the heck is going on with them versus just kind of doing them. Um, and I, for me, it's kind of nice because I do see a lot of transfer into my CrossFit work. So, um, it just feels like it's incredibly valuable for me to do things as precisely as possible all the time. And I feel like that's the way you train to become a good weightlifter. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rudy, if I was to ask you what your opinion is on the one thing in CrossFit that she's got to get better at to go from where she is to another step above, um, if you could magically wave your magic wand and eliminate one weakness, what would it be? Um. Truthfully, I don't think she has a quote unquote weakness. Uh, we developed, we've developed the extensors a lot over the last six to eight months. That was a huge focus. Um, leaving the games, the, the, anything that was extremely extensor dominant, ring dips, handstand push ups, things like that, uh, upper body extensors. Um, and we just did a workout the other day, which was, which we used, uh, parallettes for the handstand push ups that I was just spectacularly happy with and the dips are coming along, everything else. The, the funny thing about the, the, what I, why I was smiling and laughing when she was talking earlier, the, the thing about Elizabeth is, um, she had, she used to have two modes, right? So one mode was just kind of like, uh, what she, how she used to run, which was like barely moving. And then the other mode was, uh, nuclear holocaust flaming, burning out fastest two minutes in the world. And then literally almost pass out. And that was the weakness. The weakness was there was no middle ground ever. So if you watch a, if you watch a, a, a Froning or somebody like that, he goes at 85% all the time. That's all he ever, he never He's really good goes, at pacing himself. Exactly. He never really goes at a hundred percent. And he never really slows down. He literally does. He moves the exact same pace the entire workout, right? And it's not ever red line. When he's done, he high fives people and shakes hands. Well, Elizabeth, it was either it was either rolling around on the ground, writhing in agony afterwards, and and couldn't stand up for an hour, blah blah blah, or she just went really slow. So what we found over the last, and what we've really worked on over the last six months, four months, whatever whatever it is. Is that that comfort zone of push, but not, but not flame out. Um, and she's gotten the thing we said we needed to get better at after the games last year was CrossFit. And she's gotten massively better at CrossFit, not, not just being the best athlete 
walking around, but now it, almost any almost any quote unquote crossfitty thing um workout now she's comfortable with it and and understands her body and understands pacing and is under control well i will take the weightlifting side of that and say based on watching you both clean and jerk and most most of the supplies that clean and jerk but um front squat i think with a bigger front squat you're going to be more likely to go straight on the jerk and and drive the bar up a little bit i'm guessing um, that you've got a, a decent separation between your front and back squat. Um, I haven't tested my front squat in a while, but I will say my squatting overall, I think was pretty darn bad up until, I don't know, I can't even name how many months, but um, a ton of, you know, leaning forward. Um, yeah. So I've worked a lot on just keeping a vertical chest. Yeah. And it's come a long way. I feel like I feel much more comfortable um, with where I am now. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I can see that. Yeah. You want to you, you want to lean coming out of the hole in the clean. Mm-hmm. And you also want to lean doing the jerk. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times um, with people like that, will be more bent over squatters or yeah. much stronger squatters when they're bent over. Right. And that sometimes carries over into having a weaker front squat mm-hmm. than back squat mm-hmm. because of that. Um, other times you have somebody with a really good shelf, you know, on their, on their delts and they can keep that bar on their, on their chest, even with being more bent over. Mm-hmm. But, but that generally some of the things that you want to do a little more than you should are people that are more comfortable bent over squatting yeah. than they yeah. are upright squatting. Well, that is the case. Yeah. <laughs> for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah. She, you asked the question wrong. That's why I shook my head. It's not that her front squat and back squat are far apart. I think it's probably 285, 265 as far as high bar. I know you guys right. just call it back squat. What'd you hit? Oh, sorry. 300. So 300. She hasn't tested front squat. It's probably 275 somewhere around That's there. That's not a bad. Right. So the difference is low bar versus front squat versus high bar because she's gotten 330 low bar a long time ago. If I, I, we just had this conversation. I said, I wonder what you'd low bar right now. It'd probably be 360, 370, something preposterous. Um, so that's the difference. It's the difference. For, in the, for the weightlifters out there, he went 165 kilos. Wait, 100. No, I said three. Oh yeah, you got it right. Uh, of course I'm right, Rudy. <laughs> Come on. But the it, the difference is the difference is not the 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 front and back. The difference is the low the the pitched forward style. She's stronger the, pitched forward. So when she's exerting stronger. when she's exerting maximal effort, she wants to pitch forward. Right. Right. So that's uh, so. I feel well. Just kind of to go back to another what we were talking about. I feel like that's something that I feel like I've had to learn because for a long time I was like, yeah, my back is strong, whatever, who cares? I'll just use it. Yeah. You know, and that just doesn't fly. Well, in stress, you go back to the position that you're most comfortable and strong in. And so if you're most comfortable and strong squatting bent over when your body's under load and you're under stress, you're going to revert to that without, you know, even realizing it. And we are lucky enough to have as our technical supervisor here who runs the computer and all the hard stuff, Travis Cooper. Travis, you watched Elizabeth train for the last couple of days. Did you notice anything in particular weightlifting related that is a, a thing that stood out to you that she may improve on? Well, I will say her technique has changed a lot for the better. In the snatch, uh, that bar is it's making a lot more contact. The bar is actually going weightless now. Um, so you can see there's a much bigger acceleration. The bar speed is, is totally different than before. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I agree. Uh even when she was doing pause back squats, the bottom position is really good. It's obviously super strong, um, but when she's coming up, she definitely wants to lean forward, and and I do that too sometimes. So it's something that's tough, and definitely will help to stay a little more upright in Olympic lifting. Thank you, Travis. I wanted to say oh, something. Okay. Uh, just it's interesting to hear your um, observations because I feel like. I'm such a novice that I can't even see the um, progress necessarily. I can feel things changing, but you're saying you've observed things that I don't, I couldn't, I couldn't have articulated that at all. Yeah. Um, but I will say, you know, some of the things that, that you've taught me, um, I feel less like I'm manhandling the barbell. Well, you know, when you came down here the first time, 
I, I think you worked up to maybe 80, 82 in the snatch. Yeah, something like that. But you were literally varying from lift to lift the bar position by 12 inches. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you were hanging on to it because you're just a horse, you know, but, but, and that's not a bad thing, by the way. That's a good thing. That's a good thing in weightlifting. Mm. But, uh, well, because you're strong. That's what that means. You, so you, one's a little out in front of you and you could reel it back in and one's a little behind you and you could hold it. And, you know, on your lifts yesterday, I think what Travis was looking at is when she went from the floor, um, uh, f- you went, you know, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 88. 87, Eight. I think. I think it went to 87. No, you went to 88. Was it 87? Yeah. Oh, I'm almost no, no, no. positive it was 88. No, it was 87. It was 87, 89, 91. Okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway. All right. All right. I'll. I'll... <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, there you go. There you go. That's that's where I screwed up there. But I mean, all those lists were pretty much the same. I mean, they they came down in the right place. They went up the correct way. They were consistent. Um, you know, and that's a that's a difficult difficult place to get because when every lift is a little different, you're practicing it a different way every time mm-hmm. you do it. And you, but once you make that that and and this, you develop that initial capability to do at least some weight, you know, whatever weight consistently time after time then you can get better a lot faster, you yeah, know? Yeah. But, I mean, you went right up to a new max, to a new PR, with everything looking the same every time, pretty much, mm-hmm. and, and looking right the way it should look. Um, and I think that was, you know, and the same w- w- when we went off locks today. Um, with a couple misses. Right. But you did probably 10, 12 lifts that looked great. And when we quit, that was after three virtually perfect snatches from the knee. I mean... You know, I couldn't see anything wrong with them. You know, oh, they look wow. great. Oh, yeah, they look they look <laughs> great. You know, if you keep snatching like that, I mean, you're you're going to make some more quick improvement. I think yeah. on the snatch. So, the so I think, you know, the difference in the weight we're talking like eight, nine, you know, fifteen, twenty pounds, fifteen, twenty pounds. But in a way, you're doing them is a way that is going to lead to future success and right. PRs and not yeah. you know throwing them around. Well, yeah, and that's definitely borne out like in my day to day training. Um, because last year, um, like th- not quite this time of year, but leading up to the competition season for CrossFit, um, my I mean I I would PR, but then I on a day to day basis I would be nowhere near that PR. Whereas now I'm within a couple kilos of PR. And Every single day. That is one. Of, that is one of the things that really marks the time at which you're becoming a good lifter. Okay. Is 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 being when you can do the same thing day in and day out is a a very um, significant moment in a weightlifter career. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. when you can do ninety five percent lifts whenever you want and have them look the same, um, rather than you know doing seventy kilos one day and. 85 the next day right. and then the next day it's hard to do 80 and right. you know yep. something like that. that's a that's a big step in the sport of weightlifting it's very very significant and i mean to me it looks like you've done that on a snatch i haven't seen you clean and jerk recently as much mm-hmm. i've seen you know your 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 uh, jerk is much improved mm-hmm. but particularly on a snatch you you definitely seem to me to have made that step and that's a that's a big step in the right direction big Thanks. step in the right direction Thank you. um so mm-hmm. when's your next weightlifting meet huh um, well, I'll probably lift here with you guys on the 18th of okay. May. Okay, awesome. Um, and then I'm really disappointed I can't do nationals, but... I am disappointed that you can't do, do nationals that, also. Do that. Is James Ben going nationals that we had last night? Uh, we could, we could maybe do something. The like exchange that. about nationals that we had last night. We, we can do that a couple more times between now and then. <laughs> maybe we should. We can, we can argue and, and, uh... We didn't argue. We were on the same page. Uh, well, it almost felt like arguing, but not with each other. <laughs> I got you. Um, all right. Well, Elizabeth, it's been really, it's been really fun kind of contrasting and comparing weightlifting and CrossFit and looking at, you know, where you are in both. And, uh, I am, I am, I think, I don't know if I'll make people happy by saying this or I'll, I'll piss people off by saying this, but I am actually looking forward to watching the games this year for the first time. I want, right. I want to watch and I want to see how you do. And I want to see you kick some butt. Um, I have watched, I have not ever, I have not yet watched um, the games on TV except for catching like 10 minutes here, 10 there of mm-hmm. a rerun. Right. Um, so I, I, I'm looking forward to it this year oh, though because I really want to, I want to see you go out and kick some butt. So. Oh, well, I feel like I did my job then if I brought you into the well, uh, fan base. There you go. All right. <laughs> 
All right. Well, thank you very, thank both of you very much for doing the podcast with me. Thank you.